Monday on Scarecrow and Mrs. King. Doesn't anybody realize it's Christmas Eve? Can Amanda call a truce between Russian and American agents? Don't shoot me. Then... My time is running out. Kate's plan to recapture her youth shocks Allie. You kidnapped a baby! And on Newhart, Dick thinks Joanna's date with an old flame stinks. You're gonna let him smell you? Then, when the lieutenant's prisoner escapes... Merry Christmas! Cagney and Lacey have to spend their Christmas Eve on a wild chase after a runaway Santa Claus. How, how, how? Monday. When friends don't stop friends from drinking and driving, friends die. Drinking and driving can kill a friendship. This is CBS. Just ahead on the 10 o'clock report, federal marshals get tough. It's a crackdown on phony Cabbage Patch Kids, but Gillette reports. A Fort Worth girl arrives in Pittsburgh. An operation there could save her life. The Salvation Army fights to keep a holiday tradition alive. Philip Bruce has the story. And a plane has crashed tonight. One person is dead. The Channel 4 News 10 o'clock report is next. That's it. 33 storm windows. Yeah, this shirt smells like we did 100. Your shirts? Hey, Daddy, your shirt smells. You hit the showers, I'll take your shirts. Introducing New Surf, the new detergent that removes dirt and odors for two kinds of clean. New Surf washes away not only ground-in dirt, it also washes away stubborn odors. Now that looks more like it. Smells more like it, too. New Surf, it removes dirt and odors for two kinds of clean. The discussion about who has the best burger seems to have gotten out of hand. To Holby Penny! Wait, Riley! Jack in the Box interrupts the burger wars to talk about something more than meat patties, the lean ham and melted Swiss on our new ham and Swiss burger, topped with fresh lettuce and tomato. So if you get tired of the burger wars, go to Jack in the Box for the new ham and Swiss burger. There's no comparison. this holiday season as the folks at Kroger wish you the very best of everything. Let's go Kroger Go for Decker Whole Boneless Ham. Cost cutter price just $1.58 a pound. Now, Channel 4 News, Dallas-Fort Worth. <laughs> Maurice Tinsley, Steve Bosch, James Spann in the Channel 4 Weather Station, and Paul Crane on sports. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. At the top of our news tonight, a small plane crash in Waco. A pilot training to fly a jet plane was killed in Waco today when her plane crashed on takeoff. Officials say the pilot was trying an engine stall on takeoff. The plane turned right and collided with the pavement. The pilot was declared dead at the scene. Her name is being withheld until family members are notified. The two passengers aboard the plane have been hospitalized. Marcus Belcher of Duncanville is in serious but stable condition with several broken bones. The other passenger, Jack Hayes, is listed in critical condition. The Great Cabbage Patch Crackdown is underway in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Authorities have reportedly confiscated 2,000 counterfeit Cabbage Patch dolls today at DFW Airport. And as Channel 4's Bud Gillette reports, they got another 1,500 late today in a garland seizure. Capturing the cabbage critters is no laughing matter for the people who make the legitimate Cabbage Patch dolls. Original Appalachian Artworks and Coleco say they are not only protecting their copyright from infringement, but they claim they're protecting children as well. Uh, in our opinion, the dolls are, uh, in many cases, not all, but in many cases, uh, unsafe to children because of various petroleum distillates, insecticide perhaps, which were sprayed upon them as they were preparing to be shipped over from overseas. Indeed, the counterfeits do carry a heavy scent of kerosene. Hush says private investigators going undercover were able to tip federal officials to this load and hopefully others. The seizure action came in a sealed court order from federal judge Barefoot Sanders, so virtually all the information must come from Hush at this time. 
federal marshal stopped the truck as it was preparing to deliver the dolls to an undisclosed Dallas area location. They will remain in the custody of federal officials until a judge ultimately decides what to do with them. Attorney Hush says this particular shipment came from a large Midwestern city. License plates on the van show it belongs to a man living in Highland, Indiana, near Chicago. This man, who wouldn't give me his name, told me he was in the vehicle, but he wasn't the driver and was very embarrassed about the whole situation. Today's action is a civil matter. No arrests were made. Bud Gillette, Channel 4 News. Texas merchants continue to thumb their noses at the blue law tonight. In Houston, a half dozen major retailers say they will be open for business Sunday. Here in North Texas, it's much the same. This example, Target stores have announced they will be open on Super Sunday, and you may find other big-name stores also want your business here in the Metroplex on the Sunday before Christmas. Salvation Army bell ringers and their familiar red kettles have long been a part of the Christmas tradition in most cities. But in Dallas, they're becoming an endangered species. Channel 4's Philip Bruce says some retailers have banned the bell ringers. They call it a public nuisance. They used to be everywhere, but this year the bell ringers have been limited to only 25 stores and shopping centers. The Salvation Army wanted more locations in Dallas, but was turned down by retailers who felt the bell ringers would bother customers. We are a nuisance factor. We are out there ringing bells. We are reminding people of what we feel is something good, that is helping other people. But uh, for those who work in the stores, for those who have to listen to that bell incessantly, it can be a nuisance. But Major Ted well, Morris believes the bell ringers also lend to the Christmas atmosphere at most shopping centers. We add to the people shopping, and we feel even as a business proposition, it can be of value to the merchants. Some of them differ with us, of course, and so be it. Some retailers say if they let in the Salvation Army, they'll have to allow fundraisers from every other organization in town. That's why the Galleria refused to let the bell ringers raise money here. Instead, the Salvation Army was allowed to put up a display. But at least half a dozen other shopping centers have been unwilling to compromise and have banned the Salvation Army altogether. The same is true for some of the largest stores in Dallas. The bell ringers have been turned down repeatedly by the Target discount stores and most recently by the Dillard's chain. The Salvation Army says merchants have a right to say no and the organization has not protested. The group still plans to meet its fundraising goal this year, but the money, for the most part, will come through the mail in private donations and not from the familiar red kettles. Philip Bruce, Channel 4 News, Dallas. Ronald Gene Moses is dead. He is the man that led police on a chase across the Metroplex yesterday. That chase ended here in a shed in the town of Cleburne late last night. Police cornered Moses, gunfire erupted, and as police prepared to force him from the shed with tear gas, a final series of shots rang out. Moses apparently turned the gun on himself. The chase began yesterday morning in Garland and ended in the Johnson County morgue. A drama that began this morning in nearby Louisiana ended later today in East Texas. A young couple in Greenwood, Louisiana was kidnapped, driven into, a rural, into rural Texas. The woman was shot to death, the husband critically wounded. Their infant son was not hurt. Tonight, 20-year-old Toby Williams, 24-year-old Victoria Hinton, and an unidentified 16-year-old girl are in jail. Crime was the topic on the agenda in Fort Worth tonight. Channel 4 Sue Keenan tells us the Chamber of Commerce is sending a list of priorities to Austin. Crime and fear of crime. A survey of businesses in Fort Worth shows this is their major concern. So we thought with our business input, whatever we can do in the way of dampening crime will make Fort Worth a more attractive place to live in. With this in mind, the Fort Worth Chamber of Commerce Crime Commission is proposing four changes in current legislation to allow better prosecution for theft and drug possession. They also want judges to be able to inform juries about to sentence a criminal, that parole laws severely limit the time that criminal spends in jail. A two-year sentence can be served in 97 days with credit for good behavior. House Speaker Gib Lewis was on hand to endorse the Chamber's proposals and present his own crime plan, which includes a death sentence for mass murderers. And I feel that we certainly need to deal with this in the upcoming session by assessing the death penalty to these individuals. Such proposals would not benefit Fort Worth alone. The local chamber will be working with Dallas, other city chambers, and agencies to lobby these measures into laws, laws they believe have the potential of reducing crime throughout the state. Sue Keenan, Channel 4 News, Fort Worth. When we come back, a new hope for life, the beginning in Pittsburgh. And we'll talk to an expert. He will tell us why Texas should not become a nuclear waste dump site. Stay with us. Vous me connaissez? 
Pourtant, vous connaissez ma musique. Et quand je chante, vous reconnaissez ma voix, j'espère. Mais quand je voyage en France ou ailleurs, je ne peux jamais payer avec des... Alors, pour être traité comme... J'utilise la carte American Express. For the card, pick up an application. Carte American Express, surtout ne partez pas sans elle. You know, a gift from Sears can be filled with just about anything. For instance, a microwave oven with touch controls and temperature probe. Or a microwave so big, you can cook a whole meal in it. In fact, this week, every Kenmore microwave oven Sears has is on sale. Every one. You can save $10 to $180 on America's best sellers. So come in and wrap up a beautiful Christmas. Yeah, Charlie, you want to help me put those back in here? There's more for your life at Sears. Tonight at 10.30, it's all in the family. The whole crate of machine parts fell off the crane and missed him by that much. Get out of here. Missed me by this here much. <laughs> Where's my lunchbox? Bring the lunch here. Let me show them this. This is my lunchbox I brought home. How would you like it if I walked in the door looking like that? All in the Family, tonight at 10.30 on Channel 4. The Federal Department of Energy has decided that Texas might be a good location for a nuclear waste dump. The DOE has picked Deaf Smith County as one of three prime dump sites in the United States. In all, there's about 70 metric tons of nuclear garbage to dispose of. A final dump site will not be determined until the year 1990, but already there's a storm of outrage here in Texas. Governor Mark White says sparks will fly. People in Deaf County say any place but here. But beyond the emotional issue, is there any valid reason why nuclear dumps should not be located in Deaf Smith? Dr. George Crawford, a physics expert at SMU, is with us. His specialty is nuclear energy. And Dr. Crawford, beyond emotion, why do you say a nuclear waste dump site should not be put in Deaf Smith County or Texas? Well, having studied this problem for over 25 years, I can give you three quick reasons why the selection of the Deaf County site is totally an error. These three are water, food, and people. It is situated below a major aquifer which is necessary to the agricultural production of the whole area. It provides water for many parts of Texas south. It will definitely impact that aquifer. It will change the agricultural productivity. It will take a tremendous area of prime agricultural land out of production. Furthermore, it's located too close to major cities. In a sense, they have decided that they can throw these people away, treat them as they have done in, uh, the natives of uh, Nevada during the bomb testing period. They simply don't care what happens to them. Doctor, uh, yes. this discussion is over a permanent site. Can there be a permanent site? 25 years ago, I was advocating storage of radioactive waste materials in salt zones. Since then, I have learned a great deal more about salt domes and a great deal more about the characteristics of the radioactive waste materials. I am convinced there is no safe, sane way to store this material for the long period of time, 10,000 years that we're talking about. Are we letting technology manipulate us? Is the, the, the tail wagging the dog here? Absolutely. What we have done is to create a bureaucracy, giving them an impossible assignment, and they're doing their best to carry it out without recognizing that they have the wrong guidelines. Very, what, very briefly, what kind of storage do you recommend? At this point, I recommend a continual series of temporary storage positions, which will last 15 to 20 years. And then when the containment is no longer adequate, they could be moved a short distance, a few hundred yards into another temporary storage. This is actually the practice which is being, has been carried out since the high-level radioactive waste associated with the bomb program began to be a serious problem in the 50s. Okay, Dr. Crawford, thank you very much for uh, joining us tonight on our program. Thank you. In other news, Mary Cheatham is one step and many hundred miles closer to a new life. The 17-year-old Lake Worth girl has arrived in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That is where she will undergo the heart and liver transplant surgery she so desperately needs to save her life but Mary is cautiously optimistic about her trip. I'm not the right 
see what it's like. Mary will be ready and waiting in Pittsburgh when the right donor organs become available. And while Mary gets set for her transplant in Pittsburgh, a team of surgeons from Pittsburgh is flying into Dallas tonight. Beginning at 5 o'clock tomorrow morning, they will perform a liver transplant operation on a five-year-old girl from Indiana. The operation will be conducted at Baylor Medical Center. That's a first for Baylor. The Pittsburgh team comes to Dallas because there are no operating rooms available in Pittsburgh. The operation must be done immediately. And a warning tonight from the American Medical Association to doctors and to pregnant women. Delivery by cesarean section has more than tripled in the last 15 years, and the AMA Journal says this exposes women to needless risks and expense. That because, one, there is a certain danger during any surgery, and two, a 1% increase in cesarean section adds $54 million to the cost of hospital care. The journal adds anything unnecessary in medicine is inherently bad. We turn out of weather with James Fan. What is the deal with all this warm? I mean, not complaining, but is something bad coming our way? Well, anytime it gets this warm this time of the year, you have to worry about it. And right now, it's 65 degrees in the Metroplex, and it will be even warmer tomorrow. Maybe some thunderstorms. We'll talk about that, plus some crazy weather all over the country coming up next. Stay with us. There's great change in the making at Bowwater. Home Depot, America's original do-it-yourself warehouse, just bought Bowwater. And even as they remodel and restock, they're lowering prices. A Timco zero-clearance fireplace, easy to install, full brick emboss lining, now just $124.50. And now you can save 25% on our entire stock of Angelo lighting fixtures. Choose from polished brass, antique brass, or chrome. Come save with newly lowered rock-bottom prices as Bowwater becomes Home Depot. Now Seiko gives you the moon in all its phases on the world's first analog quartz chronograph and Taylor's gray with dashes of gold tone in a man's modern classic. To an elegant dress circle, Seiko adds a date window and creates a bold alarm chronograph to sport everywhere. At Seiko, great technology inspires great design. Seiko watches and clocks at your authorized dealer. Available at Haltom's Fort Worth. From prohibition through tomorrow and beyond. Shalimar, like love itself, conquers all. Shalimar, as close to forever as a perfume can come. Now available at Dillard's. Boy, it's great to be on vacation. Yeah, and we never go on vacation without Hertz. I wouldn't risk my vacation with an unreliable rent-a-car company. And Hertz affordable weekly rates save me money. But people say Hertz is more reliable. But now, Hertz costs less money. Arnie, more reliable. Less money. Arnold, more reliable. Less money. Hertz Affordable Hawaii, only $99 a week. Now, the rent-a-car company that gives you more is less. Less money. Oh, boy, they let anybody in this place. This is getting lighten up. It has been a weird week in weather all across the country. A lot of meteorological oddities. Record-breaking warmth in the east, record-breaking cold in the west, including some snow in the deserts of Southern California. We've all heard of frost on the pumpkin. How about snow on the cactus? Some parts of Los Angeles County had about a foot of snow this week, and tonight, San Diego County is under a frost warning. They are expecting lows in the upper 20s. Now, if that's not enough, we have a hurricane to talk about tonight, right in the latter part of December. Take a look at Hurricane Lily in the central Atlantic Ocean. This is only the fourth hurricane ever on record in the month of December. Hurricane season normally ends at the end of November. Top winds in Lily are 75 miles per hour. The storm is drifting south, and uh, you can see Miami and how far the storm is away. In fact, it's 800 miles east of Bermuda, but uh, nevertheless, it's something to watch for the rest of the week. Here at home, it's kind of odd tonight in the fact that it's so warm outside. We are now in the warm sector of this developing storm on the lee side of the Colorado Rockies. Temperatures quite balmy all across the state with 60s and even some 70s at this hour. Uh, a cool front is approaching our area from the west, and that could trigger some showers and thunderstorms later tonight and tomorrow. 
Some of the storms could be uh, briefly heavy, but it looks like the timing of the system is such that we won't have any major severe weather. Here's the warm front that passed through today, clearing out the fog. Most of the fog now is in north Arkansas and northeastern Oklahoma. That warm front continues moving away from us. We'll take a look now at the Oklahoma City National Weather Service radar, and here's where most of the rain is occurring across the Plain States tonight, roughly from Tulsa down to near Childress, Texas, and this uh, line of uh, rain shower activity is moving towards the southeast, so it's possible we could see some rain in the pre-dawn hours and more thunderstorms in the morning hours before that cool front moves on through. Right now, there is no significant rain in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Here's our national forecast for tomorrow. The cool front should be moving through around midday, but the best chance of strong thunderstorms should be across the middle Mississippi Valley. Elsewhere across the country, nasty weather in the northeast, freezing rain and snow likely there. Also, some snow is on tap for the northern Rockies with bitter cold Arctic air. Around the state at this hour, very balmy 60s and 70s across the state. Temperatures ranging now from 52 at El Paso and Amarillo to 71 degrees down at Brownsville. At home at 10 o'clock, skies are cloudy at 65. The humidity 90 percent, the pressure steady and winds out of the south at 6. 68 was today's high, 51 last night's low. Only a trace of rain today, and we don't have the pollen count because of the precipitation we had this morning. Now the forecast for tonight, warm with a chance of scattered thunderstorms. The overnight low, 61. Then for Friday, still a chance of scattered thunderstorms, and it's going to be warm with a high of 72. But after tomorrow, it looks like we're going to have a prolonged period of dry weather for a change, with temperatures above normal by Christmas. In fact, on Christmas Day, the high should be 68, the low should be 45 with partly cloudy skies. Interesting way to end autumn. <laughs> Tomorrow is the first official day of winter starting at 1023 in the morning. We haven't done too badly. Mm. Thank you, James. Sure. These other stories making news tonight. Roadblocks have been set up near a Utah mine where rescue workers are trying to free 28 miners from a burning tunnel. Fumes and smoke are preventing rescuers from getting in close. Meantime, crews are trying to punch holes through the snow to allow fresh air to get inside the tunnel. Senator Edward Kennedy is continuing his fact-finding mission in Ethiopia. Today he visited a refugee camp said to be one of the best. But as Kennedy found, it still cannot handle all the people who desperately need food and shelter. These are some of the stories making news around Texas tonight. In Houston, workers were taking apart a bridge over the Buffalo Bayou. They heard the bridge start to crumble, and then it collapsed trapping one man in the debris. Four men were injured, one seriously. Investigators say they don't know what caused the collapse. Elsewhere in Houston, three tank railroad cars derailed and slammed into a high-voltage transmission tower. That forced the closing of a nearby state highway. One of the tank cars contained a flammable chemical. No one was injured in the accident. Governor Mark White has asked for federal aid to help the victims of last Thursday's tornado put their lives back together. Early estimates indicate 602 houses, businesses, and churches were damaged. In Dallas County, the damage estimate is $6 million. There's no damage figure for Ellis County. Governor White will survey the area Saturday. The Texas Rangers get some help in the bullpen. And Gary Hogaboom re-enlists. Paul Crane has sales next. This Christmas season, be ready for family and friends with these great holiday specials now from Minyard. Whole bone-in smoked hams, just 98 cents a pound. Best made pickles. Smacksney Polsky Wairobi, $1.29 for the 32-ounce jar. Wilson Smoked Sausage, $1.88 a pound. Maxwell House Coffee, one-pound can, just $1.98. And the two-liter bottle of Coke, just 96 cents, regular or diet. Yeah, we believe a penny saved is a penny earned. That's why Texas shoppers turn to Minyard. Merry Christmas from Minyard. We're right at home with us. Joy, the giving spirit. Find it at Sanger Harris with fabulous leather handbags at fashionably low prices. Just $39.99 to $59.99. No matter what her style. If she slings a hobo, grabs a tote, or takes a clutch. We've got her bag and more in the colors and textures she wants. And just $39.99 to $59.99. Find leather handbags just $39.99 to $59.99 to give with joy from Sanger Harris. You could choose Heineken solely because it's far and away Europe's favorite. And Europeans know their beer. Or you could choose Heineken because it's far and away America's number one imported beer. Americans know their beer too. Or you could open it and pour it and choose it for the best of all possible reasons. Heineken is the best beer in the world. Come to think of it, I'll have a Heineken. 
So, Paul, we're back to the quarterback controversy, are we? Well, we have a little news, so it gives us a chance to talk about it. But oh. nothing that really is going to put an end to anything yet. It can hardly be called an end to the quarterback controversy, but Gary Hogleboom is smiling tonight. He signs a new three-year contract. The only details we know is the money will make it a Merry Christmas at the Hogleboom house. Gary told me tonight it has nothing to do with the pending quarterback decision. He says Coach Landry didn't even know he signed. This contract was agreed to during the season and only now gets a signature. All it really does is keep him out of his option year. The Rangers go into the free agent market again. Today they pull out right-hander Bert Hooten, who threw his knuckle curve with the Dodgers for nine years, but lost his spot in the, spot in the rotation a year ago. He will probably start here in Texas. He gets a two-year contract with incentives which could make it three. If he pitches in 1986 successfully and is healthy throughout the year, then he should have no trouble reaching these uh, goals to guarantee 1987. It does provide us with a little bit of uh, uh, insurance and, and just in case that doesn't happen. The Rangers have also decided not to offer reliever Odell Jones a new contract, which means Odell is now a free agent. In New York, Yankees acquire shortstop Dale Barra from the Pirates for Tim Foley, Steve Kemp, and Cash, and that means Dale gets to play for his dad, Yogi, who just happens to manage his new team. Uh, at the time I was drafted, my father was with the Mets, and uh, at that time I wanted to be a Met because he was there. And uh, now that he's with the Yankees, uh, my dream is to be a Yankee. I suppose he goes into a slum for him. Well, he sits like everybody else. I'll bet he does. Mavericks are off tonight. They'll be in Denver tomorrow. Word from the front office is the problems between Coach Dick Mata and Mark Aguirre have been worked out. We'll get a chance to see against the Nuggets. In New Orleans tonight, Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls playing Atlanta. Another good night for Jordan, but the same for Dominique Wilkins. Right now, they are in overtime. They are tied at 110-110. On the scoreboard tonight, Cleveland loses in New York, 112-97, and there are two other games still underway out west. 45th annual Dr. Pepper High School basketball tournament into its final stages in Dallas. Defending champion Fort Worth Dunbar in the blue, Kimball in white. This is Carl Love. He has 20 points tonight, as this one is all Kimball. Eric Kelly comes in with 14 points, and so does Jeffrey Fudd. Dunbar takes its biggest beating in some time. Final Kimball 81, Dunbar 45. And Kimball will play South Oak Cliff for the title tomorrow night. Jeffrey Ralston leading the way past Samuel with 28 points. Ronnie Morgan 16, Rodney Samuel 12. Final South Oak Cliff 74, Samuel 66, and Mark Lewis has more on the Bears. Coach Jimmy Gales of the South Oak Cliff Golden Bears is a happy man these days with forward Rodney Samuels dunking the ball and point guard Jeffrey Ralston double clutching his way to the bucket. The Bears are on top of the high school basketball world. We try to stress pressure defense and what we try to do is get a lot of easy baskets. You know, that was the best time to get them. You know how to work too hard. We play unselfish and play together. I mean, that's the key to going to state championship as like Brian did last year. Uh, no, didn't no one over their team over average over 20 points. They played together. That's why they won state. To win state this year, the Bears will have to be up for every game because when you're on top, everybody's looking to knock you off. Coach Gale is a great motivator. And he always tells us that everybody's going to be good for us since we're undefeated. So we just got to try hard. You can't rebound, hustle, steal balls, press, whatever we can do to win the game. It's been pretty easy to get them up to play. And I, I just tell them what kind of circumstances we're looking for. And they respond. They responded very well. So if the Bears can continue their torrid pace, come playoff time, they should be the team to beat but it's a long season. Tonight's not going to be your night, and we got some pretty tough teams. Salmon is awesome, you know, they're playing now. Uh, Skyline has got a good team, and so does Brian Adams, you know. And if, if we can keep our intensity at a level where, you know, uh, we like to play it, we'll, we'll be competitive, but I'm not saying we'll <laughs> win them all. Mark Lewis, Channel 4 Sports, Dallas. Kimball and South Oak Cliff, 8 o'clock Los Fieldhouse for the title tomorrow night. Looking forward to it. Thanks a lot, Paul. When we come back, James Spann has a breakfast forecast for a Friday. And children sing out the message, feed the world. Stay with us. What becomes you most? This season and every beautiful season of your life, an Avanti Fern. holidays from your friends at Avanti Furs.
magical fragrance, as enchanting as love. White shoulders perfume, sensuous, romantic, created for the American woman. White shoulders by Evian, the best the world has to offer. Just kiss makes it yours. Highland Appliance is overstocked. Your reaction, sir? Big deals. Too many washers. Tough luck. Too many TVs. So what? It's all on sale. Why didn't you say so? Right now, this 13-inch color TV with automatic color control is just $147. Save $112. Too many stereos. Car stereos. Oh, far too many car stereos. Oh, thank you. But not for all. Denim by Jordash. Finally tonight, Boy George has another hit to his name, along with several other rock stars who banded together to form a group called Band-Aid. They've written a song dedicated to helping the starving people of Ethiopia. Do they know It's Christmas has been selling very well? Proceeds will go to the victims of the famine. But drawing even more attention to the tune, a gathering in front of Albert Hall last night in London. Children lit candles in the outline of the African continent and sang the words they hope will be heard round the world. Here at home, one more check with James Spann. The umbrella tomorrow? Uh, umbrella's a good idea. Fog, though, should not be a problem for Friday. Here's the breakfast forecast. Warm with scattered thunder showers at 7 o'clock in the morning. The temperature should be right around 63 degrees. Clarice? Thank you, James. And with that, we'll end this Thursday night edition of the 10 o'clock report. Good night, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow.